Hello everyone. I am Sanjay Ghosh from Samsung and on behalf of uh, my co-authors from Samsung and IT Third Code, I am presenting this paper titled Touch Shadow Interaction and Continuous Directional UI for Smartphone. What we have done is we have tried extending the existing touch interface, touch interaction gesture. The current touch interaction gesture is based on a point of touch. When you touch a screen, uh, what is recorded is the capacitance value changing at that point of point and you get the x and y coordinates and that's the way touch works. How we are extending this is uh, to what we call as a new interaction method called touch shadow. How it works is instead of the point, it works based on the total surface area which gets in contact with the screen with the capacitance screen. There is another property of it. It is now a continuous input gesture. So the existing touch gesture, how it works is if there is an interaction element in the screen, either say a button, so either it is pressed or not pressed. It is discrete in nature. However, how we are trying to do it in form of a continuous input. The way we are uh, Detecting this is by three parameters, uh, the touch surface area, um, that is the area of the surface which gets touched to the uh, display surface that is getting detected and the interaction is happening because of that. The second parameter is the displacement of the touch centroid point of the surface and the third one is the direction in which you are rolling your finger. We did some uh, feasibility evaluation with this. Uh, so we did, uh, made an Android based prototype, a demo prototype for experimentation purpose and uh, we carried out this experiment with uh, 10 participants. Um, what we tried out is 10 different variations of touch shadow which means uh, starting from the normal touch to little pressed touch. When you press it, the, uh, the surface area radially gets uh, increased. That is the second condition and similarly if you roll towards left, if you roll maximum towards left, right, up and down. So there were 10 such conditions which we tested with 10 users. Uh, what we were detecting here is two major parameters. Um, if you see the plot over there, that is uh, showing touch major and touch minor. Those are the horizontal and vertical distance, the uh, total length of your surface area, whatever may be the shape and the displacement of the centroid which is uh, taken from the displacement of x and y axis. Some feasibility results here, um, we have plotted uh, the scatter plot for two things, two parameters, one is on the left hand side is the area or the shape and on the right hand side is the centroid position, the x and y. How we read this scatter plot is that uh, those points uh, which you see the small uh, dot. Uh, blue dot, those are all the points when the 10 users, 10 of our users touched uh, in a normal situation. On the other hand, uh, so these, each of these scatter plot has exactly 100 points, uh, 10 users and each of them tried out 10 different situations of touch. So one thing to um, analyze from this is, if you see on the left hand side of it, the shape of the touch surface does not change even if you do left roll or a right roll. The shape changes when you roll maximum on the left or maximum on the right. That cannot be detected using the first uh, set of parameters which is the area. So we rely on the second set of parameters which is the change in the coordinate of this centroid point. Now you see here uh, these two points are structured. So this was the feasibility analysis and uh, we came to know from this evaluation that uh, touch shadow was uh, feasible with three degrees of freedom, the area, the centroid position and the direction of touch shadow. Now we wanted to have a user interface for this new uh, touch gesture. So we conceptualized few user interfaces, UI elements and uh, there were 10 such UI elements which we conceptualized in form of uh, high fidelity prototypes. Uh, we applied uh, it into six different uh, application use cases which were popular for a smartphone and in an evaluation we involved 10 uh, UI designers because they can give us some feedback about how 
uh, which would, would be the preferable uh, UI interface for this new user gesture. So we did this experiment with uh, 10 UI designers, asking them their feedback post uh, experimentation questionnaire on a Likert scale in two departments. One was the intuitiveness, the other one was ease of use. This shows the result of that evaluation. So 10 different UI elements evaluated by 10 participants. Uh, this is the result. For ten, uh, for six uh, user interface uh, use cases. So what we see here, uh, if you read this uh, spider chart, is that there were three UI uh, methods which were more, which uh, was rated more in terms of intuitiveness and ease of use. So going forward, we uh, started implementing on only these three uh, UI elements. <coughs> so what were these three UI elements? Uh, one concept was known as bubble user interface, the second one was a rectangle user interface and third one was the, I'll quickly go through each of these. The bubble interface means wherever you are putting your finger, there is a bubble which uh, spots out from there and it spreads across the screen so that you can access different elements in the screen right from where you are touching through touch shadow interaction. In the rectangle user interface, uh, the implementation was same only the graphics change. Uh, here there was a rectangle which was changing its shape based on the shape of the uh, touch surface area how you are dealing with in your shadow, touch shadow. Beam user interface can be considered in, you can uh, think of it in form of a, a torch. If you roll it on a, on a table and it makes some kind of a um, um, shadow, that is what was beam user interface because you are, uh, the UI interface was in form of a beam which uh, can access different elements in the screen. So, uh, so these were the three interfaces which were implemented on an Android prototype and uh, we used uh, MAP as an application where we implemented a Android prototype on MAP. This was a dummy prototype, this was not on Google Maps or something but um, we did it only for the experimentation purpose for the time being. <coughs> so, uh, we used a simple task a very popular task such as finding a hotel in a particular area that was the prototype which was created. Um, this is a very popular task because if you might be looking for say some hotel nearby IIT Bombay. So you might be searching with different parameters in your mind and you will do a lot of searches such as which would be the cost, um, what would be the discount, which is the best uh, distance uh, from this place or the rating. And you would have to fire multiple queries, sequential queries, we generally do that. But using uh, uh, such a new touch shadow gesture, you can do this activity using a continuous user interface. You keep on moving your uh, finger on a single place and it can pop up different uh, parameters and different, different hotels in that area. So we did this uh, experiment with 15 participants and they tried out this prototype on the, using the three uh, UI methods which I showed you and uh, they gave us the feedback in form of uh, Likert scale post experiment uh, feedback, uh, five being the highest and most easy to use and preferable. So uh, this result shows that the interfaces which we proposed and the touch shadow gesture was more easy to use for the user and also preferable by the user compared to the conventional method. They tried out the conventional method on Google Map as well. So um, another analysis uh, which can be taken from this result is overall the bubble UI scored well in both of these departments, the ease of use and preference. <coughs> so let me conclude my talk. Um, there are a few things which we learned while, uh, while working on this topic. We were able to establish that touch shadow interaction was feasible with three degrees of freedom, area, centroid position and direction. We uh, tested the feasibility of touch shadow gesture with 10 different variations of and, 10 different, and 5 different directions, radial and 4 different directions at 2 different levels. Um, three continuous UI methods for touch shadow was also implemented. Uh, 
uh, bubble UI, rectangular UI, and beam UI. And we have implemented Android prototype for the map application. And when we evaluated that with the participants, they found it to be preferable and easy to use well from the conventional method. Um, in the next step, uh, we are planning to develop two more prototypes on uh, the shadow gesture so that we can take it forward. We want to develop it for more uh, popularly used smartphone applications as well as going towards uh, the smartwatch application. So I end my talk here. Thank you very much and enjoy your time in Mumbai. I can take your questions. Raise your hand. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, thanks for the nice talk. Um, is that a special hardware or does it work with all touch screens? Yeah, it, it, we have made it to work with touch screens and uh, the two only uh, capacitive touch screen and on smartphone. We have tried it only on the smartphone. Oh, so you're only reading out the position and the capacity or any other values? Yeah, so uh, we are reading up the complete capacitance value right from the kernel layer. There are two ways we tried implementing. One was uh, we tried uh, getting the complete capacitive values, not just the x and y coordinate of the uh, change of capacitance value. That was one implementation, which was done by hacking the kernel layer. The other way of implementing was uh, at the application layer. Um, so we were getting some values right at the application layer on the screen. So we tried using that. And how do you calculate the area? You said you you're using the area? Yeah. So? Yeah, so, so there was a formula used for calculating the area. We assumed that the, uh, the uh, area would be some form of an ellipse and therefore the formula for ellipse was used and then did an error correction on that. Thanks. Thank you for a, a useful and very interesting talk. I just have a question about how inter intuitive is this touch gesture because people are used to certain gestures. So I would suggest you need to build it into a typical application and just see if people use it rather than the, the standard sort of circle to, to draw an area in which they want to search. Um, have you considered that? Yeah. So um, the objective with which we were working was uh, breaking through different steps which people take in order to do a complex task. An example which I showed was searching for hotel in a particular area. If you do it with a conventional method, you may have to do multiple touch, multiple typing and multiple queries in that way. So there is a lot of input and then a lot of uh, the system throws out a lot of output to you and you keep on working on that for some time. What we tried achieving through touch shadow is that we are breaking through this boundary. We are making things easier, probably in that way making things more intuitive as well. Probably if people start learning that, how, how they want to do that, then probably it may become more easier there. Does that answer the question? Our methods of drawing a circle around an area on a map and saying I'm oh, searching in that area, have you compared how effective that is compared to your touch share? Yeah, so I can compare to the exactly same type of gesture which you are mentioning. Giving um, input, a multimodal input saying that uh, find me some bus stops in this particular area. That is just one level of input. If, what if you want to change your input? You were not satisfied with the output which the system gave you. You may have to change your input that time. That is not possible currently in the current ways, current uh, touch interaction. You will have to do another touch input. On the other hand, this allows you, this kind of uh, uh, gesture will allow you to change your input every time and continue to interact with the system. Uh, hello, Sanjay. Oh. Uh, I have a question. Sir. Uh, uh, so, if, how do you activate the feature or is it specified to limited applications? And second question is, how does it uh, interact when you use multi-finger gestures? Because in that scale, that would be a problem, I guess. Yeah. So, first part of question is, uh, uh, different application, how does it scale to? So right now I would say we are zero on that because what we tried out as an evaluation was just a dummy application, we tried that. That is one of our future goals that we are going to do it on an actual application on a smartphone or smartwatch. 
some regular applications. So yes, that is in our radar. Um, the second part of the question was on the uh, multiple fingers. Yeah, that's true. If that is one of the another application which we are working with. So, so for instance, typing is generally many people do it with two thumbs. And if I have a keyboard which can work using uh, such shadow, there should be two shadows working for both of your fingers. Yes, uh, that is a good idea, and yeah, we thought about it, and right now not implemented, but possible definitely. We'll do the same implementation. Hi, uh, thanks for this nice, nice talk. Um, I was trying to compare this with a lot of pressure based interaction work people have done in the past. How do you compare this against your work? Yeah, so the main point is that most of the pressures, pressure related work, touch pressure work, um, primarily which is uh, patented by Apple, the 3D touch, uh, pressure touch. Um, what is assumed here, there is you need to change the hardware. So, how does the, the 3D touch of Apple works is there is a diaphragm below your uh, screen and when you press the pressure uh, sensitive diaphragm gives you some changes in the values. This method we are staying away from changes into any of the hardware. We are working with the commercial uh, off the shelf uh, just making uh, things possible for the software itself. So there are also this FSR based ones right which you know right now you don't really have to change exactly so it's just that that the capacitance the, the same capacitance that you use to actually detect whether you're in hover or you're touching and so on you can actually also use that to know how much you're pressing on the screen. So it's not not all of them there are a couple of work by Shriram Subramanian from Bristol and so on so it's not always that you have to change the hardware. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, this is all, all presentation is finished. And uh, in closing, uh, thank you all for your, uh, the, thank you all for the presenters for their contribution. And also, uh, I thank all of you uh, for the many suggestions and comments. Thank you.